Okay. Okay. Well, let's, let's go over a couple of things. First of all, this outer layer that we see right here represents the capsule. Uh, these, this represents the ureter, this area represents the pelvis. And notice we have the renal pyramids, typically 8 to 12 per kidney. And notice that the renal pyramid uh, forms a blunt point, which we call the papilla. And within that papilla is a papillary duct, which probably we can see better over here, which drains into this cup-shaped area, which I can write this cup-shaped area right here, which is called a minor calyx. Here's another example of a minor calyx. So right in here we would have a papillary duct or ducts which would drain the urine into a minor calyx. The minor cal calyces join to form a major calyx and then all of these major calyces join to form this number four which is the renal pelvis and then we exit via the ureter to go to the bladder. The other thing we looked at in lecture class was the blood supply to the kidney and so here we see the renal artery this branches into segmental veins, sorry, segmental arteries. From segmental arteries, we branch into interlobar arteries. Now, we're going to have to jump in this picture because i got to uh, go from here. Let's go over to the center of model and pick up where we left off. So we left off talking about the interlobar artery, which branches into the arcuate artery. The arcuate artery branches into interlobular arteries. From interlobular arteries, we take the afferent arteriole into the glomerulus, which you can see in this right here. This whole structure here represents a renal corpuscle, which includes Bowman's capsule plus the glomerulus. So going back again, we took the interlobular artery to the afferent arteriole, afferent arteriole into the glomerulus. We leave the uh, eff uh, or we leave the uh, efferent arteriole to go into what are called peritubular capillaries. Uh, we then collect these capillaries and form the interlobular vein, the arcuate vein, the interlobar vein, and then we have to go back to our model. From the interlobar vein we go to the segmental vein and then the renal vein. So now let's move over into the middle model and talk more about the nephrons. In this model we have two nephrons illustrated. We have a cortical nephron and a juxtamedullary nephron. The difference being that the cortical nephron, much more of it is in the cortex than is in the medulla. In the juxtamedullary nephron, most of the nephron, nephron's parts are within the medulla when you can see how it dips way down into the medulla. The parts of this nephron would be Bowman's capsule, the proximal convoluted tubule, the descending limb of Henle, the thin segment, still descending limb, but it's the thin segment. We have the ascending limb, thin segment, and then we have the ascending limb, which is a thick portion in here, which is, consists of cuboidal epithelium. This all consisted of simple squamous epithelium. We continue up to form the distal convoluted tubule, which comes in contact with the afferent arteriole, continue to the uh, continue the distal convoluted tubule to collect with the collecting duct. Many collecting ducts join to form together to form a papillary duct. At this point we can speak of urine. In this next model we're taking a close-up look at one of the structures that we saw earlier. Let me just go back for a moment. In this picture we saw the glomerulus and we saw the whole structure of the renal corpuscle. So what we're going to do now is focus more closely on this structure in the last uh, plate. So we move over here and now we're taking a look at that at the renal corpuscle exposed. We have Bowman's capsule, also called the glomerular capsule. Uh, we have the, glomerul the glomerulus which consists of glomerular capillaries. These capillaries are covered by podocytes with their pedicels. These little uh, markings that you see represent the pedicels or finger-like structures that provides a filter for the blood and of course what's going to happen is the blood, the blood will enter through the afferent arteriole, enter into all of these capillaries and exit through the efferent arteriole. What, what is going to exit the capillaries right here is going to be glomerular filtrate which will move first into the proximal convoluted tubule and notice the brush border in the, convolute, in the proximal convoluted tubule. Moving back over here, we hear this is a distal convoluted tubule and again this is the afferent arteriole. These cells of the distal convoluted tubule, you can see, are columnar. They represent the macula densa, which is a structure that can sense salt levels. 
in the afferent arteriole, we have juxtaglomerular cells, or JG cells, which are able to sense pressure changes. These two structures together are referred to as the juxtaglomerular apparatus.